All right, guys, this is the view I think most of you are used to, but I get so many questions about what's involved in making a lock lab video, what equipment do you use, how, how do you handle your lighting or camera or software, or how do you get organized, and I think I'm going to do a video about making a video. So while this might be what you normally see, there's a lot of other things that are involved here that are just out of camera, and I thought I would go over some of those very quickly. Let's start down here at the very end. Uh, the first thing is the box of giveaways. As you guys know, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I have a giveaway uh, on the Lock Lab. And that's what you see there. Uh, the brown ones on the right are Tuxedos, and the ones on the left are Sparrows Tuxedo Royales. I prepackage everything in these brown envelopes I get from uh, the container store because they're fairly inexpensive, about a buck a piece. I package everything, I label it, this one's a Tuxedo Royale. So when you win, all I gotta do is write your name, return address, drop it in the mail. Too easy. The time consuming part, of course, is packaging everything up. If anybody has a Sparrows discount code, I really would appreciate it. All right, this next box are, it's actually a combination of things to be reviewed and also giveaways. Um, these are what I usually do give away in the fan appreciation giveaways every at the beginning of every month. I'd like to make a plug for learnlockpicking.com because they generously donate these to us. I don't have to pay for these, and they're pretty expensive. They're 50, 50 bucks or so. Uh, so every they watch us pretty closely. As soon as I give away the last pair, without me even asking, they're really good about sending a couple of more. So as long as they keep donating them, I will keep giving them away to you guys. Uh, this next part is where I get most of the questions. It's about cameras. What camera do you use? And this is the guy. I keep them plugged in all the time when I'm not using them. This is a duplicate. Obviously, I'm using one just like him to film this. It's a Sony Cybershot DSC WX220. Sells on eBay for about a hundred bucks. Um, I have an older WX150 here, so when I have a high-risk shot, like I'm beating on something with a big hammer and a piece of metal might come off and hit the lens, I use the uh, the older camera. Also, when I'm outside, like in the rain or something, I'll, I'll use him. Uh, batteries, I have some backup batteries, and I've learned the hard way, don't buy aftermarket, only buy OEM. These only last 20 minutes, and OEM uh, and the aftermarkets last like five minutes. There's my charging station, and of course, there's always something charging there. Moving a little bit further to the left, uh, this is where all of the stuff that you guys send in. When I get a challenge lock or donations to the lock lab, I log it in so I know who sent it and what they sent, and then I will progressively work through it as I have time. If I find something I can't pick, I make a whipped it video, or I will move it over here to the naughty, well, not a naughty bucket, but a naughty box anyway. So that's what we got. Um... I'm going to go ahead and put the camera back in the original position and show you just how everything is laid out. On the far right, over those red handles, those, that's a fairly new set of Nipex, both large and small, internal and external circlip removers, and the big one on top, somebody recommended, I grabbed that from Craftsman for the larger circlips. Uh, again, just out of view are these guys. I never know what you guys are going to put in your locks what kind of screw, how large, and so I just ha literally have to have everything. So uh, I 3D printed this holder, and on the front here I have hex, large to small. On the back I have nut drivers, large to small, and you, some of you guys even have taken to using Torx screws, and I have all the different sizes of Torx. If I run across something that n these tools won't open, I got a scalpel so I can sever my own carotid artery. I got a, a spinner here. You guys saw me review this. It's called a Flip It by Multipick. I liked it so much. I, put, I keep one on my bench now. And moving to the left, I have, these are, this is a circlip remover for Euro style locks. This is the most frequently viewed tool. I, this came from Jeff Moss. And one more pitch, Jeff. Thank you, sir, for sending this probably three years ago now. I use this all the time to remove the tailpieces off of Schlage's. I have two different sets of followers, and the reason is because there's different tailpieces. So with those six, hopefully I've got the right uh, follower to fit whatever tailpiece you guys send in to me. A couple of flashlights in case one dies, i got a backup. And then again, out of camera, a lot of times I can shim locks open. I keep these handy to do that. That's sometimes the fastest way in. 
On the front right here are what I call my experimental picks. These are from Rare Element. These are those 13 thousandths. I'm getting a lot of use out of these. I probably am going to find a permanent home for them in the main holder. I'm not going to go over that now. I've done it before. A little further to the left, I have uh, on top of my beater block, I have a backup camera. So if the camera battery starts to die, I simply reach over, mash the button, and that way we don't lose anything on the video. Um, use that beater all the time. This thing's getting a lot of mileage on that thing. A little further to the left, uh, different pinning trays. I hate getting into a rut and using the same thing all the time. So what I'll do is I'll use this guy, and then after I've used him for a video, I'll slide him on the bottom and just continually circulate these things. So you don't have to look at the same pinning tray all the time. Uh, a little further left, you guys have seen my vice, a Panavice Model 350. And what you might not have seen is the tool tray on the bottom. I keep a lot of different tools on the bottom. Some of them are color-coded, so I know exactly where to grab what I need. It's all right here, very handy for me. All right, let's talk about lighting. Uh, I film everything in front of a window, so I use as much natural light as I can get. Sometimes I come home after dark. Sometimes it's overcast, like it is out there today. I have, overhead, I have fluorescent light. Off to the right, I have an LED panel. And if that's not enough, above, I have another LED that hopefully will keep everything in focus and keep all the shadows off of whatever it is that we're trying to look at. Uh, in terms of recording sound, I right now, when I'm walking around, I try to use this guy to capture digital high-resolution sound. This is a Zoom H2N. And for normal videos, I will use this guy. It's a Yeti Blue. And he's mounted, and I'm going to have to put my H2N down to show you. He's mounted on an old fluorescent light arm that I've kind of converted so I can move that up and down to either put it at mouth level or move it down next to the lock so you guys can hear the feedback. The Yeti feeds through a USB cable all the way down here to my laptop computer. In the laptop, I use a, pr a free program called Audacity to capture the digital sound from the Yeti microphone. And later, I'll show you how I merge this with the video. This is, uh, as I said, a free program. I power everything with what I call my power bench. Uh, there are two wires coming down right there. Those come from eight solar panels mounted on top of the lock lab. Everything feeds down into this guy. It's a solar charge controller, which converts whatever the panels generate to 24 volts. The 24 volts gets charged to these giant batteries beneath the bench, and these this 24 volts gets converted to 12 volts, which I use to charge all the batteries for the lock lab for everything from cameras to flashlights to backup lights. Uh, I have another backup light right here, and that backup light is for when I'm filming outside on a cloudy day or filming over at the vice. He generates an incredible amount of light. It's variable, by the way. If I need 120 volts, uh, those two giant cables in the back feed into an inverter. And the inverter converts 24 volts into 120. So I power the entire lock lab by solar panels. The only thing I can't power would be the, the uh, lathe or the milling machine. They're both 220, and so I can't do it. Anyway, that's all of the equipment. That's how I power everything. So let me go ahead and go inside, and I will show you how I process all the data I collect, video and audio, into a, a uh, YouTube film. All right, guys, first off, I'm using a program called Ice Cream Screen Recorder. It's about a $50 program. Got it on the Internet, and I will put a link to it down in the description. All right, this is the program we're going to be working on, and I called it Whipped by David Stanley version 2. Created a folder, and inside of there, I put all the files. Now, the, there are six files. This is going to be a really easy one. A lot of the programs have, uh, I mean, a lot of the uh, videos have 20 or 30 different files that we've got to work with. I want to keep this one reasonably short. I've also numbered them so they're going to come up in the right sequence so, so that we don't miss anything. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to highlight the title here, and I'm just going to hit Control-C to copy that. It's going to save me some work. I'm going to highlight the program. This is called Magix Video Pro 10, and when he fires up, he will give us an entry screen, and right here is where we're going to save all the time. Rather than use today's date, I'm just going to hit Control V, and there we go. Whip by David Stanley version 2. Say OK. Okay, these 
screens are fairly typical, whether you use Windows Movie Maker, whether you use Adobe Movie Maker, or even the Apple program. On the top left is your preview screen. On the top right are all the program files that we're going to be using to make this video. And then down on the bottom is what's called the timeline. Rather than describe that to you now, I'm just going to show you how it works and save a lot of time. All we need to do is highlight the file that we want. We're going to take the intro clip and we're going to drag them down. We're just going to drop them right there. Now I know some of you guys are a little bit OCD, you get really upset if I put long intros, and I don't make them guys. My niece and her geeky friends used to do it, now I have my webmaster do it. So sometimes even with him I've got to shorten these things down. Let's do that. First I want to see what it looks like. I hit play. All right, that's kind of cool, but uh, at 12 seconds, you guys will probably shoot me. So I noticed the first little bit of this is black, and the sound is not very loud. So right up till about there, so about a second and a half, I'm going to put the cursor there, and then I'm going to hit my scissors right here, and that's going to split the object, and I'm just going to delete that first second and a half or two seconds. Now, when I start him now, it's a little more instantaneous, a little better. Then right there, that's kind of small, and I really don't get a benefit from that. So I'm going to back this up. The video is good till about right there. So let's cut off that last five or six seconds, hit delete. Now I've taken a 12 second video and we're down to seven seconds. I think we can all live with that. All right, we're done with the intro. Now let's start producing the video itself. The second one here is a video file. I'm going to drag them down and just drop him. And we're going to allow the thing to calculate the graphics. It usually takes a couple of seconds. Now you notice right up here in the front we have these three spikes. Well that's because I'm going to drag my audio file down here and I'm going to drop him right about there. That's because the audio file actually has, we're going to have to cut it a little bit. Let's find out where we are. We need to find three spikes and there they are right there. Bam, bam, bam. So he's highlighted, he's yellow. I'm going to put the cursor right there and I'm going to hit the cut and I'm going to delete the first part of that audio file. Now I'm just going to drag it back to the beginning. And what we need to do is align these three peaks. What I did is before I started the video, I clapped my hands. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to take my indicator, put them at the beginning of the audio that's tied directly to the video. I'm going to drag the second audio and line them up perfectly. Once they're lined up like that, I'm good to go. I'm going to put my cursor down here. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. Now I'm going to find out where the video starts. So he starts right about here. Let's see what we got. Let's play. Oh, man. Okay, so we got some audio happening right in there. I am going to start find out where that is again. Let's start right about there. I'm just going to cut it. And all of these are cut now. I'm going to delete the first part of that video. I'm going to delete the unused portion. And now my, my exterior video file is synchronized with my original video file. I'm going to get rid of the video or the audio that was recorded with the camera. So audio functions, remove audio object. I'm going to take the audio that was, removed, that was taken with the Yeti Blue. And now once they're both together, I'm going to tie them together. I'm going to link them so they're grouped. So now when I drag this thing around, they're always going to be grouped together. All right, now we got good sound with good video. Let's drag it back over here, and I'm going to butt them up against that intro. Now let's go right back to there and take a little bit closer look. If I were to just go directly from the intro to the video, y'all would get pissed off. No good. Got to put a transition in there. So I'm going to go up here to fades, find a good fade. Let's take, let's try that guy. Let's just drag him right there. Now let's see what he looks like. Not bad. I think we can live with that. Oh, man. Okay, now you can hear the timer. All right. And there's me talking, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we got the video in there. Now we're done with that part. Now let's go over here. Until we get to the very end. 
notice that we have some differences in length, so we got to clean that up. So let's go to the very end of the video and hit play. I really don't feel at all bad about being whipped by this lock. Anyway, fellas, appreciate your time. Stay safe, stay legal. David, awesome Stanley sequel, i got to say. Thanks. And we'll stop right there. Cut off all the end, make it all flush, and again, we're good to go. Let's go back to our import. Okay, now we need an outro because we got the intro, we got the main video, we've got good sound with it. Now let's get our outro. I'm going to just drag him and drop him right there. And now that he's populated, I'm just going to bring him over, bring him over and overlap like that. And let's see what that looks like. All right, good, but we don't have any sound. Let's get the outro music right there, number five. Drag him down, drop him right about there. And let's fade him in a little bit so he doesn't get loud immediately. And let's see what we got here. See, thanks. Let me drag him a little bit to the right, and we're going to call that good. Thanks. All right. Now, one last thing. Uh, this is where I generally put all of my thank yous and requests for donation. So I have a donate uh, uh, icon here from um, After Effects. So let's see with you. I'm going to fade him in. I'm going to fade him out. And let's see what that looks like. All right. That's, it's nice, but... Uh, Let's make it a little bigger so nobody notices it. So I'm going to go up here to Effects, View Animation, Size Location, and I'm just going to stretch that out a little bit and center him. Right in the middle, no way anybody can miss that. All right, at this point, all I'm going to do is uh, put in another title here with the list of people who have donated. I'm doing this way in advance, so I don't yet know who they're going to be. When I get done, everything's in place. I go to File, Export Movie. I go to MP4. I want to record it at 1080 because that's what my camera records at. And then I just push OK. I just ignore it. And now it will begin compiling. Depending on the length of the movie, it can take anywhere from 10 or 15 minutes up to an hour or more to compile everything that you just saw. Anyway, fellas, that's all there is to making a, a Lock Lab video. Appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal.